Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. It's confirmed what we already suspected. It is validating. That's San Diego attorney Joseph Dix responding to a recently released ACLU study. It says black San Diegans were more likely to be stopped, searched and arrested. It also finds more cases of force used against them by San Diego County Sheriff's deputies. The attorney claims that his client was roughed up by deputies in the North County back in 2014 and on the heels of that ACLU study, the attorney and his client are speaking for the first time to our team 10 investigator Adam Rakusen. Adam. Yeah, and Mikhail Miles wanted to be able to share his story. He and his family no li longer live in California. He says he's too scared of the people tasked with keeping him safe. The images are startling. Bruises on Mikhail Miles' head, bite marks on his body. I just never would have thought that it would have been me. They're the aftermath of what Miles' attorney describes as the beating of a black man by law enforcement in a predominantly white neighborhood in northern San Diego County. It's absurd. Uh, that this useless act of violence was not only done, uh, but that it was covered up, that it was excused, that it was explained away. A little more than five years after the incident, Mikhail Miles was finally ready to share his story. We spoke to Mikhail and his dad through Skype. They now live in Virginia. And you guys no longer live in California. Why is that? Um. I didn't feel safe anymore. Mikhail says the night of September 5th, 2014, he left his house to pick his brother up from a skating rink in Temecula. When they got back to Fallbrook. Came back, seen activity um, on my street. His attorney says Mikhail pulled around the block and saw flashing lights in his rear view. There are at least four police officers with their guns drawn pointing at the vehicle. According to an incident report, neighbors had called 911 reporting an attempted vehicle burglary with some of the suspects driving off in a white car. Mikhail Miles, an African-American preschool teacher at Camp Pendleton, was also driving a white car that night. While speaking to deputies, neighbors identified Miles' car as it drove by, saying that's the car. He's ordered out of the car by four different deputies screaming confusing commands and contradictory commands while a dog is barking. McHale is suing the San Diego County Sheriff's Department and Deputy Jeremy Banks for assault, battery, and civil rights violations, among other things. His lawsuit claims McHale got out of the car and backed up slowly with his hands in the air until one of the deputies put cuffs on him. At that point, Deputy Banks strikes McHale Miles twice in the back of the head. The lawsuit claims Deputy Jeremy Banks also commanded the police dog to attack. Team 10 obtained deposition videos of Deputy Banks explaining that night. Banks claims he witnessed Mikhail Miles being non-compliant once he got out of his car. When asked why he delivered two blows to Mikhail Miles' head, Banks responded. You, you struck Miles twice as opposed to once. Why? Uh, the initial strike, he still wasn't compliant, so I delivered another strike. And what was he not compliant with? Uh, putting his hands behind his back. Here's something else revealed in court documents. There was more than one call to 911 that night from someone else in the neighborhood. The person you have detained, what, what did he do? Um, he's been trespassed on our property and uh, ringing our doorbell every weekend. Turns out there was no attempted vehicle burglary. Banks says he didn't know about the other call until after everything was over. Still waking up crying. Um, thinking about it. The Sheriff's Department says it's not going to comment on the case, but in court documents, the county argues deputies had reasonable suspicion to stop the car and that Mikhail Miles did not follow deputies' instructions. Riding Miles escaped Deputy Banks' grasp and walked behind him. It says fearing Miles would attack, Banks commanded the dog to bite. Dick says there's no justification for the way Mikhail was treated, and it's not the first time Banks has been aggressive. Back in 2015, Banks made national headlines after being caught on cell phone video using a taser on a teenager. Sheriff Bill Gore defended Banks, saying the boy refused to comply and bit Banks, leaving a mark on him. And in 2013, Banks was one of four deputies involved in the arrest of Hugo Berrigan. Berrigan led police on a chase before running into a relative's home. Berrigan later died at the scene. There are at least six instances um, documented uh, where he was unnecessarily and excessively 
violent with members of the minority community. Team 10 asked the department if Banks has ever been disciplined for interactions with the public. They say they don't comment on personnel matters. Mikhail Miles now has a two-year-old son. I asked him how he'll explain this incident to him. With this being the world that we're living in, I know I am going to, um, but I, I don't even know how to broach this conversation um, because I wish I didn't have to. And Miles' brother, who was also in the car that night, was not injured. Miles was cited for resisting arrest, but was never charged for that. He sued in 2015. Joe Dix tells me they're still waiting for a trial date, hoping that'll be sometime this year. Banks is still with the department, assigned to the Court Services Bureau at the Vista Courthouse. Adam Rakusen, Team 10. Adam, thank you. County health officials just announced that tests on a potential case of coronavirus have come back negative. Meantime, local schools, they are acting fast to try and shut down rumors surrounding that disease. The rumors target three schools in the Grossmont District, falsely claiming that students have been infected. One phony post even goes so far as to use a Photoshop Union Tribune article. A district spokeswoman says all of these are false. There are no reports of anyone in the district being sick with the virus. Most students we talked with say they knew the posts were fake. It happens. Like, the kids will make, or kids or whoever, they'll make fake reports about, oh, there's a bomb threat or a shooting threat, which that's not funny either, but it's to the point where you're like, yeah, okay, whatever, because they make fake stuff all the time. A district spokeswoman says they are investigating the sources of those fake posts. Months after a 19-year-old was gunned down at a Linda Vista rec center, police have arrested a 16-year-old for the crime. Officers stepped up patrols in the wake of the shooting to curb violent crime in the neighborhood. 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is joining us live now. And Mimi, a community activist there, says it will take more than police patrols to fix this problem. And Kimberly, he says it's not entirely up to law enforcement to fix the whole problem. That shooting happened here at this basketball court in Linda Vista back in November. And he says too many young people are being killed and no one is really getting to the root of the problem. Violent crimes and poverty has plagued this neighborhood for decades. Dr. Corey Pahanish works closely with San Diego Police. He's the executive director at Bayside Community Center. His goal is to improve conditions in Linda Vista, making it safer, especially for the kids growing up here. This is starting to take the lives of some of the kids here in the neighborhood, and that, that really stings, that really hurts. From May to November of 2019, 10 News reported on five shootings, some of them fatal, involving teenagers and gangs. Thursday, San Diego police announced they arrested a 16-year-old in connection to a shooting that killed 19-year-old Nam Huen. An argument on the basketball court at the Linda Vista Rec Center ended in gunfire in November. These are kids that didn't have the opportunity to see their life through because they were shot. We met 13-year-old Nick Hughes, who comes to the skate park here often with his dad and has witnessed what no kid should ever see. All you heard was just bang, 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 bang. And and then I look over and then I just hear somebody else return fire at the other people and then you can kind of like see them run across the field. San Diego police noticed the increase in crime and upped their efforts to reduce it, adding more patrols in the neighborhood day and night. But Pahanish says much more needs to be done at different levels to get to the root of this problem. A lot of people don't know that it's one of San Diego's six most socioeconomically distressed neighborhoods. More after school programming for teens, uh, programs that are helping to support single mothers in this neighborhood, philanthropic support in this neighborhood. And San Diego police tell me they always increase patrols whenever they do see an uptick in crime. We're live in Linda Vista tonight. Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Some good ideas there. Thank you, Mimi. In December, we told you about a partnership between the Boys and Girls Club and the city of Oceanside to help at-risk young people before it's too late. It's called the Oceanside Youth Partnership. It runs for 12 weeks, two hours a week, and it helps teenagers who are struggling to find themselves. It tries to redirect them away from gangs. You can find more on that program on 10news.com. The Marine Corps is calling an MCAS Miramar commander's firing, quote, a surprise in a statement today the Marine Corps announced that Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Featherstone had been relieved of his command following concerns of poor judgment. Featherstone commanded a fighter attack squadron at the and the Marines noted that he had otherwise exceptional distinguished career. An interim officer has been placed in charge of that fighter squadron. 
Water customers in Poway could get money back after they were forced to boil water for a week late last year. The city council received a recommendation to give customers a one-time credit on a future water bill. Most people would get 10 to $50 based on use. People and businesses in the city under the boil water advisory for a full week following fears of contamination. City council will consider the credit at its next meeting on Tuesday. If approved, that credit would appear on bills in either March or April.